Hey, what's up, bro? Welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel, bro. And this is a special edition of Movies That Pop, taking a look at the greatest bromances in the history of cinema. Movies which may be about any number of things on the surface, but which at their heart are about platonic friendship and bonding between men. Now, just to clarify, these are not romances. Sorry, Brokeback Mountain, that's a whole other list entirely. And these are not just movies that have great male friendships in them. Sorry, Maverick and Goose, but that movie isn't about your relationship either. These are movies where the movie is really at its heart about the friendship between men. So, call up your buddy, ask him to bring over a case of beer so you can pop on one or two of these flicks whenever you really want to bro down. Number 10 is I Love You Man. This film is, well, I mean, just look at the title. It's the most blatant romance of the bunch. A comedy about a man, Paul Rudd, who is about to get married and realizes that he doesn't have any close male friends. His quest for a best man for his wedding leads him to a very sweet friendship with Jason Siegel and a lot of laughs along the way. And it really makes a sweet point about both the difficulty and the importance of making new guy friends after you've reached a certain age and the need for male bonding and a sense of fraternity. Number nine is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, the first of our road trip movies, which you'll find is a common theme throughout this list. Steve Martin and John Candy, suffering each other's company as they both try to get home for Thanksgiving, is a classic romance and a classic comedy, with huge and really profane laughs as the journey goes from bad to worse, and then has a huge emotional wallop of an ending that perfectly balances the cruelty and the profanity that came before it. This is one of the few scripts written by John Hughes that focuses on adults rather than children or teens, and he uses his insight into the human condition to craft a story that is rich, bitingly funny, and honest about male friendship. Number eight is... No, number eight is... It's, it's a movie about two friends that... They bond over sports and, and, and manly things, and Brian's song is a classic romance about two men crossing a racial divide to arrive at a place of mutual respect and, and yes, brotherly love. But, but, but maybe this is the kind of romance that you want to watch alone, you know, unless you've got a bro you feel comfortable crying in front of, like a little girl. I love Brian Piccolo. And I'd like all of you to love him, too. Oh, oh man, I wasn't ready for this. Turn it, turn it off, turn it off! <coughs> um, let's just uh, change the subject. Uh, we got something lighter at number seven? Ah, oh, you betcha, here we go. Number seven is Dumb and Dumber. Harry Lloyd, fellas, two guys who are lifelong companions simply by virtue of the fact that they are both so dumb that no one else would have them. Forget the sequel and the prequel spin-off. This one is a comedy classic, irresistibly quotable, which sees Lloyd Christmas, played by Jim Carrey, drag his friend on a cross-country adventure to stalk a woman he's obsessed with. Now that's a ride-or-die homie if I've ever seen one. Number six is Super Bad, and this is one of a series of movies that comes from the same core group of filmmakers that includes Judd Apatow, Evan Goldberg, Seth Rogen, and these guys keep making movies about wildly different subject matter like rock and roll, or an interview, or a demonic apocalypse. But all of these movies have a thick undercurrent of male bonding, rivalry, and platonic love that really resonates with me. This is not going to be the last Apatow-produced movie on this list. This is really his wheelhouse, man. Anyway, super bad, between all the laughs and the gross-out humor and the McLovin of it all, contains some real difficult truths about teenage friendship as it tells the tale of two losers, Michael Cera and Jonah Hill, trying to get to a wild party. Bonus points for launching the career of the multi-talented Emma Stone as well. Number five is the story of a literal bromance, and that's Rain Man. Tom Cruise brought a lot of dimension to the role of a slick huster who gets screwed out of his inheritance when his father dies. After he learns that the inheritance is going to an autistic brother he never knew he had, he kidnaps that brother, played in an Oscar-winning turn by Dustin Hoffman, to use as leverage and takes him on a, well, wouldn't you know, another road trip. But this one does take some great turns, from a frantic search for a place to watch Wapner, to a crazy run at the blackjack tables in Vegas, and in the end it's a perfect portrayal of brotherly love and a deserving winner of the Oscar for Best Picture of 1998. Now we're at number four, and now, now listen, when I started making this list, I almost immediately, like by default, put Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid on it. Because as cinematic duos go, Paul Newman and Robert Redford 
are about as good as it gets. Also, check out the Sting, another great contender. But, but you know, the more I thought about it, there's another great western that's also a story of friendship, and I think it's probably more deserving than the light-hearted Butch and Sundance, and it certainly contains more scenes of raw loyalty in the face of unforgiving odds, and that is 1993's Tombstone. That's right, look at these guys, marching together towards the gunfight at the OK Corral. Now, a couple of these guys are actually brothers, but the real bromance here is between Wyatt Earp and, as he would write later, my friend Doc Holliday. Is there ever a more ride-or-die bro than Doc Holliday? When Earp has to go off to a duel he will most surely lose, Doc shows up and says, I'm your Huckleberry. The emotional but very stiff upper lip goodbye from a hospital bed at the end of the film, I mean... You compare that with Butch and Sundance's cooler but less emotional final moments, and you'll understand the placement on this list. At number three! Now, I told you that Judd Apatow and crew have been making the best movies about male relationships, and this one is definitely the best of those. A bromance for the ages between a guy and his pot dealer, that's right, Pineapple Express! James Franco and Seth Rogen make a great cinematic duo, and they've reteamed afterwards on things like The Interview and The Upcoming Disaster Artist, but I'll always consider this as their best pairing. James Franco's amazing character, Saul, probably my favorite of his until Spring Breakers came along, thinks Seth Rogen's character is really his friend, but Rogen just thinks of him as his dealer and that's it. When they get caught up in a web of murder and conspiracy and have to go on the run from the criminal underworld, their relationship is tested, broken, and in a crazy action finale, renewed and justifiably celebrated. At number two is the one that inspired countless imitators and sequels, heck, created an entire genre, the buddy cop movie, and that's 1987's Lethal Weapon. Now, while I consider Lethal Weapon 2 the better movie overall, Lethal Weapon 1 is the start of the classic romance, with Mel Gibson's suicidal, haunted Martin Riggs pulled back from the brink by his friendship with Danny Glover's irascible family man, who is too old for this, you know. It's a classic. Great action, great performances, bros who start out wanting to kill each other and end up killing an army of bad guys instead. What could be better? Well, I'll tell you what could be better. Now, I'm sure a lot of you had an idea what your favorite bromance was when you started this video. Perhaps you've seen it pop up already on this list. But because lists like this are subjective, I get to put a movie on here that is probably my favorite of all time. The one me, the Colonel, puts in when he needs dependable entertainment. And I can tell you I've just about got it memorized. And that's 1988's Midnight Run. Robert De Niro is Jack Walsh, a down-on-his-luck bounty hunter, and Charles Grodin is the Duke, a fussy accountant who ripped off the mob. Walsh has to find the Duke and transport him cross-country, uh, how about that, before they get caught by the FBI or killed by the mob or end up killing each other. I love everything about this movie. The twangy rock score by Danny Elfman, the chemistry between Walsh and the Duke, the deep supporting cast of characters, from the mob boss and his lackeys, to a high-strung bail bondsman, to a rival bounty hunter, to FBI agent Alonzo Mosley, this movie bounces along on a wave of action and double crosses and some of the most colorfully filthy dialogue you will ever hear. Pure diverting fun from beginning to end, this one has heart too. And that final scene between Walsh and the Duke at the airport, everything about it, from the score to the dialogue to the way that blue angelic light he just hits Robert De Niro when he turns around. Mwah! Perfect! Midnight Run wasn't the first action comedy, it wasn't the first road trip movie, nor was it the first bromance, but in the nearly 30 years since it was released, I've seen it dozens of times, and it has never been bested. Jack Walsh, see you in the next laugh. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there if you'd like to see our movie reviews. You'll be able to view all of our other videos. Plus, please consider subscribing to our channel. You can also support us by clicking the thumbs up icon below if you liked what you saw. Please leave your favorite bromances in the comments as well. Did I miss something? Was I way off? There's no wrong answer. Film is very subjective after all. And I love hearing what all of you think. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. And I love you, man. I love you.